This video is a continuation of our talk on epithelial tissues. Remember epithelial tissues are going to border the outside world so they protect your insides from the outside. And part of this bordering the outside world means that our epithelial tissues are going to line our body cavities and internal body spaces. What do we call a body space on the inside of our body? We call it a lumen. So far in this video series, we have covered simple squamous epithelium, which we see in these two boxes here, and we covered simple cuboidal epithelium. We've got one more simple epithelium left, and that is simple columnar epithelium seen in this box here in red. So let's take a closer look. Here, our lumen, all of our white space, is going to be the inside of our digestive tract. So this slide is going to be a slide of mammal intestines. Usually what we're looking at is small intestines here. We don't see a huge variety of cells and primarily everything that you're looking at is going to be simple columnar epithelium. So here we see with our arrows that I'm pointing to nuclei of simple columnar epithelia. And before we describe this type of tissue in detail, let's break down the name. If we are talking about a simple epithelium, what does that mean? Hopefully you answered right off the bat that we only have one layer of cells. If we have more than one layer of cells, it's not a simple epithelium, it is a stratified epithelium. Our middle name in this tissue is columnar. When you think of columnar, you should think of columns like you see holding up some people's porches. Long tall cells with an oval-shaped nucleus. So we're going to say they are column-shaped. And then because we're talking about an epithelium, that means that this tissue is going to be touching white space or a lumen that is an internal body cavity. All right, now that we have the name down, let's talk about this type of tissue in specific. Okay, in our description of cells, we can say that our cells are long or tall. We can call them column shaped or rectangular shaped. And our nuclei are oval shaped and they tend to reside more towards the basal side of the cell. Locations for simple columnar epithelia include the lining of our digestive system. Here we're looking at a picture of intestines, but we also see simple columnar epithelium on the inside of our stomach. Not only do we see simple columnar epithelium lining our stomach and intestines, but also our gallbladder, our uterus, and our uterine tubules. Now let's think about functions. In our picture of our intestines, what are our simple columnar epithelium doing? Well, they're absorbing nutrients, so one of our functions is absorption. And in our stomach and in our gallbladder and uterus and our uterine tubules, we're going to be doing some secretion of mucus. This secretion of mucus is going to serve a couple of different functions. In our stomach, it's going to be protective so that we can protect our tissues from that acidic stomach acid. 
and in our uterus we're going to be secreting nutritive uh, secretions to help nourish an egg while it's implanting in the uterine wall. So absorption and secretion are great functions for our simple columnar epithelium. One more thing I want to point out before we go on that will help you distinguish simple columnar epithelium from pseudostratified columnar epithelium is what I like to call a highlighter brush border. This highlighter brush border, so right here I wrote highlighter border, is going to border the lumen. And if you see this dark pink area, I'm drawing it in green, but on the picture it looks dark pink line that is lining the apical side of our cells, that is our highlighter brush border. This highlighter brush border is going to be made out of microvilli. And what do microvilli do? They increase surface area for absorption. So again, we're talking about our function here of absorption. And the reason why it looks so dark in this picture is because you have so much cell membrane that has been stained with dye that is used to make slides. If we draw our little cell, we've got so much cell membrane making up those microvilli that it's going to look a little bit darker than the rest of our cell because there's just more dye in that part of the slide. And so that makes up our little highlighter brush border. Another thing I want to point out is that our nuclei are in a single line. So I'm really pretty picky about the uh, slides that I use on Lab Practicals and I like to get my nuclei all in one line and that tells me that I have a single layer of cells and that is going to help me distinguish from pseudostratified columnar epithelium that this is simple columnar epithelium. We can see in this right hand picture where it looks a little bit more busy we still have that single line of nuclei. There's no double nu Ooh, sorry about that. There's no double nuclei there. We've got a single line of them. This picture here again shows us we have a single line of nuclei all in one row and it emphasizes our highlighter brush border of our microvilli increasing surface area for absorption. This picture also shows us one goblet cell. So let's take a look at more goblet cells than just that one. Here we have tons of goblet cells. All of these open looking areas that look like they're squeezing in between our simple columnar cells, those are goblet cells. So what exactly is a goblet cell? A goblet cell is a unicellular exocrine cell. Okay, unicellular. What does uni mean? Uni means one. And so if we have a unicellular exocrine gland, this shouldn't say cell, this should say gland. A unicellular exocrine gland, that means we've got one cell making up this gland. What does exocrine mean? Exocrine means that, that we are secreting our substance onto the surface of your body. So here we have an internal surface. What could we be secreting in our digestive system? 
I mentioned it earlier, we are secreting mucus. So our goblet cells primarily secrete mucus. And so these empty spaces, they are filled with little secretory vesicles full of mucin. Mucus is mucin plus water. So really, we're secreting mucin. So let's correct that. Okay, so now we're secreting mucin onto the surface of this um, simple columnar epithelium, and that creates mucus on the inside of our digestive tract. So on some pictures, you're going to see goblet cells squishing past our single layer of simple columnar epithelium. But again, I want you to see we've got that single layer of nuclei, and we have a highlighter brush border. It's harder to see in this picture because we have so many goblet cells, but we can see it in our original picture. Here's our highlighter brush border. And we also see goblet cells. Can't see that color very well. We also see goblet cells in our original slide here. Okay, so those big open spaces. And then these guys over here, those are also goblet cells. So hopefully that helps you understand simple columnar epithelium a little bit better. And if you have any questions, never hesitate to contact your instructor.